Good Friday morning, everybody. It is February the 10th, and I'm Chris Allen here on the SAM channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace, which, by the way, you've got a couple of days today, tomorrow, Sunday. If you go to Ace Hardware Marketplace, you can get a dozen roses for as little as $19.99. How about that? Yes, at Ace Hardware Marketplace. Yes, the, the hardware store. Yes, they are real. <laughs> you know, it's uh, I know it's amazing. When I tell people about Ace Hardware and the stuff they have, that, besides tools and you know, lawnmowers and all the stuff that uh, you think a hardware store would have. They also have things like that. Vera Bradley stuff for women and Simply Southern and Hallmark and all these things. It's it's not just a, a, a man's hardware store. It's so much more than that. It's, uh, it's actually where I get some of my um, uh, coffee. They've got coffee there. Yeah, and the Black Rifle coffee, which is my favorite, that supports veterans, and it's the best tasting coffee. I'll go to Ace Hardware to get my coffee. It, it Yeah, you guys need to check it out. Ace Hardware Marketplace, you need somewhere to shop to get something for your lady, your significant other. It doesn't matter. Ace Hardware Marketplace is going to have it. And the Dozen Roses for $19.99. Unbelievable. Okay, let's check things out here this morning. Pretty quiet on the radar, and the satellite is showing some cloud cover around the area this morning. There it is, some low-level clouds just kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to detect here, but it's it's this whitish gray area. The darker grays here back in western Kentucky, that's where the skies have cleared, and it's much colder back here than it is with this blanket of clouds that are over Bowling Green and much of the Commonwealth this morning. Got a little weak trough that's back here that's going to be really insignificant during the day. Uh, really, today is just going to be a mix of sun and clouds, noticeably cooler than the 68 that we had for a high temperature yesterday. Yeah, 68 was the official high temperature at the Bowling Green Airport yesterday. Our average is now at 50. Yes, we've gone up another degree on the seasonal average, so that's an 18-degree difference. 68 the high, 50 the average. 18-degree difference. We had 17 hundredths of an inch of rain officially at the Bowling Green Airport over the last 24 hours. So some of you got a little bit more than that. Others, not as much. A little bit of rain out of that system, but it's all gone now. And those winds, whew, we had some peak gusts yesterday, well over 40 miles per hour. I'll show you some of that in a minute. First, let's take a look at the model blender and look what's coming. We've got another big, warm, spring-like uh, scenario setting up for us. As we get into next week, this weekend is really going to be, if you can even really call it, cool. At first, we were looking at tomorrow only being in the 40s. But now, because of uh, the way the pattern is shaping and moving and flexing and there's more of a zonal flow here, uh, it is not going to get as chilly as we first thought. So we're going to go 50-51 today and kind of around there tomorrow. Uh, even though we're going to drop to like 29 or 30 for an overnight low tonight under a, a partly cloudy sky, it's we're going we're gonna to warm right back up. And as you see, we steadily climb each day, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Look at Wednesday, 71 new numbers coming in. So we go upper 50s, low 70s, mid to upper 60s. Then we take a big, a big drop. Uh, signs are showing us that by next Thursday, 
we could be looking at a potential severe weather day across the area. Just the dynamic of the wind and then the temperature change for February when you see a 71 and a 66 to a 39, look out. This time of the year, something's going to happen. So just want to give you a heads up that that's the day that we're looking at now. Next Thursday into Friday is going to be maybe something that we need to keep an eye on. Already looking at it. Then we hop right back into the 50s and 60s by next weekend. So, you know, <coughs> excuse me, we get these little... Uh, these little dips and then we warm right back up and it's no big deal. And as I've explained many times, the days are getting longer, the nights are getting shorter. And naturally with the earth's tilt, we're going to start to transition to spring and the days will continue to progressively get warmer over time. Uh, it is still mild this morning, maybe not quite as mild as it was yesterday morning. Here is the Kentucky Mesonet temperatures as a 450 this morning, 10 before 5. As I do this podcast, you can see uh, mainly 40 statewide. Back to the west, yeah, where the skies have cleared, temperatures have dropped into the 30s, losing that blanket of cloud cover I showed you on the satellite. The satellite showing that blanket of clouds over much of Kentucky except for the west so that's holding in temperatures in the 40s. So out of curiosity, let's check on the winds. Uh, peak, well, I may not be able to go that far. Still a little bit breezy. I could go into the charts here, maybe. Let's see what, what happens when I do this. Um, I know there's a way to do this. I just did not prepare for this part of it. Um, Wednesday. Da, 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 da. No. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted to show right there. So we had yesterday a 43 and a half mile wind gust, but there were some wind gusts from the Kentucky Mesonet Network uh, stations, this is Warren, um, that had higher gusts above 50. Uh, and once you got over toward Taylor County, Central Kentucky, there were some gusts of 60 uh, miles per hour, even higher. So, yeah, those winds meant, meant business yesterday. So, anyway, just wanted to show you that real quickly. Uh, let's move on to the maps and uh, let's see what's uh, coming here. This is a little bit of a different looking map. I'm, I ran into this uh, looking at some uh, maps because I know you guys have told me that um, you like some of the newer maps I've been showing, but uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to see where the state lines are and all of that. In fact, let me go in here and turn off. And I'm doing this with you guys just kind of being right here. Wait a minute. Let's go. There we go. Okay, that's better. So what I can do is uh, this is uh, a model showing the next couple of days along with precipitation, even though there's not anything on there right now, but I put it into motion and you see low pressure system over the Great Lakes. You see high pressure building out west. Here's rain and that, remember yesterday I was telling you about that uh, closed low that uh, was going to sit over Arkansas in this area right here. See, I can draw on this one too. This is all going to progress off to the east as we go through time. So here we go into Saturday, then into Sunday. Really high pressure is going to hang on for us. 
and keep us pretty dry here. Um, I don't think we're going to see much in the way of precipitation. The thing to watch is this low as it starts to travel off through the Carolinas. If it tries to throw back some moisture into eastern Kentucky, I'll put this into motion and show you that that tries to become an issue here on Sunday. As you see right there, higher elevations could see a little bit, maybe mixed precipitation, but I don't think that's going to be an issue for us. So I'm going to keep it out of the forecast. Here's Monday. Then we go into Tuesday. And here comes the system that we're going to watch uh, that's going to move out of the South Central Plains with a pretty good line of thunderstorms. This is going to be a pretty good cold front here. And with it comes a lot of Gulf moisture that's going to move into the area. You can watch that happen. Here we go from Tuesday into Wednesday, and there we go. Uh, this has the dynamic, and notice here all the, all the lines, all those um, pressure lines are together. That means it's going to be windy. The flow is going to come up. Surface winds out of the southwest, moisture out of the south, and we get a lot of convergence here. Uh, I think we're going to set ourselves up for the possibility as that front comes through of some severe weather uh, as we get into maybe Wednesday night into Thursday. Let's progress just a little bit more here. Here we go into Thursday, and that system does then move a little further east, but it does have some colder air back behind it, okay? So all of this, this low-pressure system, will be drawing down a lot of colder air into the area as we get into Thursday. Thursday will start warm, but then the colder air begins to move in back behind it, and uh, that's where we're going to start to see some problems. There's uh, Thursday. Notice the uh, low pressure system over Indiana and then the cold front with the stronger storms. I think that's a pretty good possibility the way this is going to be set up. And it's a deepening low at that. I don't think we'll get any of the snow on the backside of it. But here we go into next Saturday. It's going to be much colder. But that cold air is not going to last. We go into Sunday. Next Monday, pretty quiet weather after that. Then it starts all over again. Okay, so it's a different kind of uh, view of things. Maybe that gives you a little bit better map. I don't know. You tell me. I like I liked the maps that I was using that had the wind particles in it because then you could see the winds really moving uh, kind of in real time. But uh, I want to make sure you guys, when you look at a map, you're going to, what am I looking at? I don't want you to do that. I want you to be able to see it and understand uh, what's going on. So we'll see. I've got so many different varieties to choose from. I'm just trying to find the right fit. Um, now we go to the uh, surface map just to kind of show you really what I just showed you, but in maybe a little more basic uh, display. So things are quiet here. Here's that closed low that's going to try to make a run of moisture at us, but really all we're going to get is a few clouds today and tomorrow. So we'll say partly sunny to mostly sunny. We're going to stay dry during the weekend. There's that low off the coast of uh, the panhandle of Florida that's going to try to push a little bit of that moisture in on Sunday. But I don't even though it does kind of paint it in close to Bowling Green, I don't think it's really going to make much of an uh, impact on us. Further east into the higher elevations of Kentucky and the Smokies and the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains, yeah, there's going to be some even there mixy stuff. It's not going to be all snow, and it's going to be short-lived. As you see by Monday, it's off the coast. Here comes our next system brewing in the desert southwest on Monday. Then into Tuesday, we get some light rain. The front stalls out over the area and waiting on that next low pressure system. Cold front comes through. 
That's not the bigger deal. The bigger deal is going to be as we get into Thursday with this setup, which is the one that could potentially bring us severe weather. All right. So um, today, through the rest of the weekend, it is Super Bowl weekend after all. You should be good. Everything is going to be uh, mild, not necessarily as warm as the 68 that we had yesterday. Uh, but still, for this time of the year, right around 50, low 50s, sunshine with a few clouds. You know, not a bad Super Bowl weekend. Um I'm headed to the radio station this morning, one more time this week, a finally Friday at Sam 100.7 in the morning show from 6 to 10. I hope that you will join me there. In the meantime, God bless you. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you on the radio.